Okay, so the universe is now full of galaxies, which are full of stars, right? But what about the stuff that really matters? The planets. How do you go from a gigantic swirling mass of gas and dust around a baby star to something solid like Earth, or something gassy like Jupiter? It's a process called accretion, and it's cosmic construction at its best. Forget the big galactic collisions for a moment and zoom right in on a single, newborn star. When a star first forms, it's surrounded by a massive, flat, swirling pancake of leftover material, gas, ice, and all those heavy elements created by the dead monster stars we talked about. This is called a protoplanetary disk. Now, this disk is where the magic happens. Everything is swirling around, but nothing is uniform. The tiny specks of dust, think microscopic grains of rock and ice, start bumping into each other. But here's the cool part. They're moving fast, but not too fast, so instead of shattering, they stick together. It's like sticky, cosmic snowballs. This sticking process starts slow, but it quickly builds momentum. You go from dust grains to pebble-sized clumps, then to boulder-sized objects. When these objects get to be about a kilometer wide, they get a special name, planetesimals. These are the true building blocks of planets. Gravity is now kicking in hard. These planetesimals are where things get violent. They start crashing into each other at high speeds. These aren't gentle collisions, they're massive, destructive impacts. But instead of destroying the potential planet, the collisions often cause the objects to merge, like cars piling up in a slow-motion freeway accident, but with incredible heat and pressure. The biggest clumps win, sweeping up everything in their path and growing into planetary embryos. Now, whether you end up with a rocky planet like Earth or a gas giant like Jupiter depends on where in the disk you form. Close to the star, it's too hot for ice to survive, so you only get to build with rock and metal, that gives you the rocky inner planets. Further out, past the frost line, there's tons of ice available. These cores get huge quickly, reaching 10 times the mass of Earth. Once they're that big, their immense gravity starts sucking up all the surrounding hydrogen and helium gas like a vacuum cleaner, creating the giant gas and ice planets. So, the next time you look at Earth, remember it was built by billions of gentle stickings and massive, destructive collisions, all in a dusty pancake around a brand new sun. Pretty wild, right?